Hello guys, welcome to the channel Code Board once again, and this is Kausik. So we are at the second tutorial video for the jQuery tutorial video series. So in my first video, I have already discussed about the jQuery theoretical part, like uh, what is jQuery, why should we use jQuery, how do we include the jQuery library in our application, etc. So if you have not seen that video till now, please proceed and watch that one, and then proceed with this video because that will help you to understand the basic concept of jQuery. Okay, so in this video, we are going to use some jQuery coding and we are going to write some jQuery coding uh, hands on and we are going to make an application with jQuery. The application is going to be very simple, it's nothing but adding two numbers. Okay, so we are going to take two input uh, user input in HTML input elements and then we are going to sum that two number and the sum result will be shown in the browser alert. So this application I am going to make using the jQuery library and while I will do this you can easily understand that how I am going to handle the jQuery event and the selector etc. Okay, so let's dive into the coding. Okay, so as you can see that uh, I have already created one HTML file for our project purpose and I have already downloaded the jQuery JS library. So I have shown in my last video that how you can download the jQuery JS library and uh, use it in your application. So you can, I need to link the jQuery JS library in my HTML, right? So let's first do that. Script source equals to jQuery dot JS and the script end. Okay, so that's it. I am going to, uh, I have already uh, linked the jQuery JS library in my HTML. Now I mentioned that I am going to create an application. It's a simple SAM application. We are going to take user input in input element of HTML. Then we are going to show an alert in the browser uh, of the SAM of that particular two numbers. Okay. So let's start with that thing. So for that, all we have to do is that first we need to create two input elements. Okay. So let's create two input elements. So let me first create a label enter number one and the input element will be input type equals to number because we are going to take number here and id i am going to give is as number one num one okay so that should be good and let me put a line break here at the end okay now i am copying the same thing in the next line just i am going to change the label as number two and the id also num two okay and next line i am going to add a button so the functionality will be button will be like something like this uh, if you click that button, then the alert will be shown with the sum of these two numbers. Okay. So let me create a button here. Button, I am going to add a ID as calc maybe. And let me put the button text as sum and button. Okay. So that's it. Very simple HTML structure, nothing difficult in it. So let me go to the browser and show you that how it does it look like. Okay, so that's it. So the thing is that when you are going to uh, put some number here and maybe click on the sum button, some alert should be shown. But I have not written any coding for the button click or anything. That is why I am not going to get any alert. Okay, so let's add some code. Okay, so in, under the jQuery JS library inclusion, we, I am going to write my code. Okay, so there is a point, let me tell you that, that when you are going to use any JavaScript library, it can be a jQuery or it can be any library, maybe your custom one also. So if you are going to use that library to write your JavaScript coding, then always include it before writing your code because the browser needs to know that the code that you have written inside your script tag that is using the library. So the library needs to be loaded first into the browser, then the code which is using that library needs to be loaded. Okay. So if I going to write now the some coding using the jQuery library, my code has to be below to the library inclusion. Okay. So let's start here. I have written the script tag now. Okay. Okay, so the script tag. Now, 
I need to take two variables. Okay, so inside those two variables, I am going to take the value from these two input element with ID num1 and num2. Okay, so let's first declare two variables. In Java or C or any or some other language, how will you declare a variable? int a, b or something like that. But in JavaScript, you can do it simply like var num1 num2 or you don't have to put the type of the variable because javascript is a loosely typed language if you declare a variable you can uh, store any integer string character whatever you want inside that particular variable but in java or c which are tightly typed language i can say uh, you can if you declare a variable type as string maybe then you cannot uh, store integer inside that particular variable right but in javascript you can do that okay so i have already declared two variables here num1 and num2 so in the num1 variable i am going to store the value which user is going to put into the input element which has id num1 okay so let's do that num1 equals to dollar has num1 dot val okay so that is the syntax so what i am doing that the jquery syntax is always starting with uh, dollar i mentioned in my last video and then i am using has num1 so that is also i have already mentioned in my last video that whenever you want to select some input element using its id you need to put the has before the id okay so the id here is num1 and i am going to use the has before the uh, id so that the jquery can understand that it needs to select a element which has id num1 okay so that is exactly the same thing what we used to do in javascript as document dot get element by id num1 so that big syntax now simply dollar has num1 okay and then it's coming to the function which is val okay so the val function basically uh, returns the value which is going to be written by user inside this num1 input element okay so in javascript what we used to do document dot get element by id num1 dot value by which we used to get the value from that particular input element but in jquery it's very smaller than that one it is like dollar has num1 dot val okay so this is going to return the value which user is going to input in this particular input element okay so let's do the same for the num2 okay so num2 equals to dollar has num2 dot val okay so the value has been retrieved into the javascript section now i need to do the sum so let's do it var sum equals to num1 plus num2 okay so when this code is going to be executed if i just leave it right now so this is going to be executed when the page is loading right so exactly that is not our intention our intention is that when the sum button will be clicked then only this code should be executed right so for that all i have to do is that i need to bind a click event with the button sum okay so the button id is calc so i first need to select the button so how will i do that dollar has calc and then i need to write the event name that has to be click and then the callback function right in this way let me correct the indentation here okay so that's it now what is the code is doing the code is doing that uh, when a element with id will be clicked then this method will be executed right so this is exactly what we are looking for so the button element id is calc so when the button will be clicked this function is going to be executed okay so in javascript what you would do you would do document dot get element by id calc dot click equals to function then you would write the function body so that is 
exactly same for the jquery but the syntax is different and smaller okay we used to do it in javascript window dot onload equals to function then we need to write some coding okay because that will ensure that when the document will be loaded and ready to be viewed then the code needs to be executed so the similar thing can be done in jquery also but the syntax is a bit different so let me show you how will you do that so for that all you have to do is that dollar document dot ready function and then you write your code okay so this indicates that when the document will be ready to be viewed into the browser then this function needs to be invoked so now finally i need to show an alert here so alert should be sum is sum okay so that's it let me go to the browser there is a issue here but let me first show you into the browser so that you can remember it forever that how you are going to solve the issue okay so I'm going to the browser and refresh it. Let me put two and three one second. And if I click the sum, the sum is 23 instead of five. Okay. So why is that? So that is the issue I was mentioning. Okay. So the val function always return string. Okay. So when you are getting string value into your num1 and num2 instead of any integer or double or float whatever then the num1 plus num2 is doing basically the string append operation instead of arithmetic sum that is why 2 plus 3 was going to be 23 okay instead of 5 okay so for that all i have to do is that i need to type cast the value which is being returned by the uh, val function to integer or float or double so i am doing it as float because i am expecting that user is going to put some fraction value so let's do it pass float so pass float is a predefined function in javascript which takes argument string and type cast the string to the float okay so that should be everything let me go to the browser and show you let me put as 2 and 3 now it's coming as 5 right now let me put some fraction value let me put a 2.9 and 3.5 okay so this is working quite well as you can see so that's it you have successfully completed creating a very simple application using jquery okay so if i go to the code uh, so it's a like uh, a 7 to 8 line of javascript code apart from the html basic designing so i explained uh in a very simple manner i hope so still if you have any doubt about my explanation or video presentation please let me know into the comment section so that i can improve myself in a better way okay so in the next video we are going to see some more selectors and event till now you can try to understand this code and you can also try to develop some application by your own so if you have enjoyed this particular tutorial video please like and subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching.